first, first of all, we have a really fantastic speaker that I'm very much looking forward to hear from. So Rohini Pradeep is head of product engineering at Gusto, where she currently heads engineering teams for payroll, benefits, and HR products at Gusto for enterprise customers. And she's a seasoned tech executive with more than 20 years in, in tech and prior roles at VP of engineering at Little Passport, Little Passports, at SVP of engineering at Blurb. So she, she has seen a lot. She's dialing in early from San Francisco. So I'm especially appreciative of her uh, like getting started early in the day to be with us virtually today. And her talk is going to share her insights on how to manage engineering challenges for startup scaling. Please all join me in giving a warm welcome to Rohini. Thank you so much. Thank you, Philip. Hello, everyone. Very excited to be here. And thanks for the introduction. Um, it is early. I hope I had enough coffee to have a very productive discussion. Before we get started, a quick introduction to Gusto. Um, Gusto is an all-in-one platform that helps small and large companies uh, focusing now focusing on larger segments with full service payroll, uh, health insurance, medical, dental, vision, compliance, time tracking and employee lifecycle. That's a lot. So companies and employers can actually focus on their core um, and know their employees are taken care of. Now, let me start with a story. Meet Jessica. She is a small business owner for a tech company and has seen incredible growth for her product. She now has to scale the organization to continue to have the right outcome for the end users while providing the right support for people within the organization to scale efficiently. The goal for today's discussion is to understand the engineering challenges uh, while scaling the startup. And I believe quite a few people here uh, have worked for startups going through a growth phase, and it's okay if you've not had that opportunity yet. Uh, what we want to discuss today is based on my experience working with startups that scaled from, say, three engineers to 90 members engineering team, and the challenges I saw with that growth have been in the technology space, as Philip pointed out, for the last 20 years, and specifically working with organizations, startups, mid-sized companies uh, for the last 10 years. And this presentation will not discuss how we want to say address uh, scaling servers when we reach 100 million users, but how we manage challenges with engineering teams growth with scaling. We'll start with listing out the challenges first and later discuss how we want to address them. As many of you can relate, most of the engineering scaling challenges are related to execution because at certain point in the organization, it's 10% strategy and 90% execution. And to get it right, trust me, most important aspect is the people aspect. Um, the ch challenge uh, you will start facing when it comes to people is the team alignment for product vision as the company continues to scale, uh, getting alignment with the team. And as a part of the growing team, another big challenge is information sharing or passing the hat when new people are onboarded. It can be a tedious process with steep learning curve and internal relationship that pre-exists. And, and if there isn't a good enough process, it can end up being very, very expensive. And new roles get introduced and people need to deal with the change and adapt to the new structure to take full advantage of the new additions to the team. As in, if an engineer is used to directly working reporting to the CEO and making product decisions, introducing a product manager role could come across as a new challenge to deal with for that particular engineer. And not defining the roles, goals, expectations, priorities for individuals and team will make commitments challenging to deliver on. And of course, the service mindset, always very, very critical. Keep a close watch on who you're building the product for, as well as ensuring business teams supporting these customers continue to stay supported. And moving to the technology stack, um, as an organization, you've come a long way, starting with building the prototype, making the product available to customers at the earliest, 
you'll have a challenge when you have to scale to meet customer demands at a faster execution if you have bottles in your technology stack. And you can get, and the question you need to answer is also if you can get features from development to production with enough confidence. As your stack grows along with the team, so do chances of systems breaking if it is not done right. And do you have the right technology selection to add features without friction? Uh, KTLO, which is keeping the lights on, and tech debt is a very common term and challenge every engineering team runs into these days. And do you have the right developer tools to make the team productive? And as you scale and ramp up the team, you start looking for people who focus whose focus will be on specific areas, as in you're gradually shifting from generalists to specialists on the technology team to support various functions. It's not just about moving people around, it's also about some structural changes, organizational changes that need to go in. And if you don't plan it right with how you scale the organization, you burn it all, or you commit to things uh, that a team um, cannot deliver on, it's below optimal, so you need to be very thoughtful about how you organize the team, set teams up for success, and also not hurt the business in the process. And moving to the process aspect, old habits die hard is something I've heard several times. And it's just that adapting and accepting changes as a team as the team continues to scale is a hard one. And especially if people are getting tasks done um, by directly walking to an engineer, um, um, it's, it's, again, a very hard habit to switch away from. Context switching for engineers can be very expensive, which will also impact the velocity of the team. Uh, you can't quite predict what the outcome will be and what the team will be able to deliver on for the right outcome and the focus. Uh, that is demoralizing for the team, resulting in attrition, productivity, which unfortunately is counterproductive to the goal you have in mind, which is to build and scale the team. Now, moving to how you would resolve these challenges, um, going to the people aspect, um, holistic view of the business with the service mindset. And again, as we continue to scale and add more layers in between the end users and the engineers, it is important to continue to have the end user in mind, who you're building the product for and understand the return on investment customer pain points and the right outcome. Outcome in this case is understanding, empathizing and building what's right for customers, finding a way to delight and solve undeclared problems, uh, which can also change customer behavior. And it also is about how the organization where the cross-functional teams can organize themselves to solve the customer problems. And based on the company size and the type of business, uh, you can have several programs in place where engineers can shadow CX organizations or even internal um, uh, people who support these end users um, as a part of user studies. And something we've been trying at Gusto uh, or have been executing at Gusto is engineers having the opportunity to understand customer pain points as we've continued to scale both internal and external customers. And next, moving to empowerment, empathy, and accountability, right mindset for the right time. When a startup enters a growth phase, you need to have the right mindset for your current phase of development and make sure people you are working with are on the same page with expectations and deliverables. Um, reinforcing positive accountability with Clear role definition and ownership increases happiness and employee engagement, and you want to continue to focus on that. And this creates a positive culture, right opportunities for people to continue to grow in the organization and also move away from this blame game when things don't go quite right. Introducing working agreements, getting aligned with the team um, and what they're committing to can be a good example of how you can get that going. And change is also a hard thing to accept, not just for engineers, but also for stakeholders within the company. And as a part of scaling, as you're actively hiring people, introducing new people, organizational changes, um, critical to be empathetic to your coworkers and make transition easier. This is basically being sensitive to people's experiences and being in their shoes. Um, also helps engineer understand and be thoughtful of the product they're building. And related topic is very closely tied with 
empathy is empowerment. People on the technology team are engines for delivering on software product and empower developers for getting on board when defining deliverables. Realistic ones can be hard on everyone. Encourage collaboration, respect, and asking for recommendation and setting milestones. And of course, can-do attitude where people can go the extra mile is also pretty critical when building a strong, trusted team. And when you introduce a new role in the technology team, don't make an assumption. People can relate to why you're adding a new role and how significant it is to support technology scaling. People might think they can relate to it based on their previous experience uh, in some cases, but it is always good to articulate and make sure everyone understands the expectations and why certain roles are getting added. Make sure it's consistently communicated and there is a seamless transition process. Once you identify the roles that you need to build the team, share the goals with relevant for relevant positions and individuals, as well as the team. Set people up for success and ensure they stay focused and make that happen. Um, and talking about values, engineering values, define how we respond to situations and how we can make decisions as we continue to scale. Um, and one thing uh, we have been doing well that Gusto and our CTO Eddie has articulated the values really well is basically uh, focusing on quality, trust, humility, and service when you're building the product with a pinch of pragmatism, of course. You have to be very practical when you're building these products and also giving back to the community. Um, you owe it to the community around you uh, to have the right impact. And RISE, uh, this is representation, inclusion, social impact, and equity. Again, one of the missions at Gusto, uh, we have been practicing it really well. And I, I highly encourage that uh, with your teams as you continue to scale them, uh, building a collaborative and inclusive workplace, uh, which is very important for intersectional approach to employee engagement. And um, the, you can end up with a richer workplace, culture, and product development with different perspectives brought from different uh, diverse backgrounds. And moving to the next slide, uh, which is basically focusing on uh, the technology aspect, starting with the developer productivity. Um, it is very critical to have a good culture, which is cohesive and productive, positive. And uh, core technology aspect to scaling is also related to providing developers with the right tool set to deliver on features. And one goal you should start considering is, if you've not done that already, is continuous integration and deployment model for better DevOps features. And one um, and cloud-based solutioning if need for a data center is absolutely not necessary for your business. Of course, monitoring and logging for better visibility on issues and SLAs, and focusing on unit and integration tests for higher quality, since discovering bugs later in the development cycle can be expensive. Um, of course, revisit your architecture to ensure you have the right design to scale it. And KPIs and success metrics, as we've discussed before, it is important to understand what the outcome and the impact is for the organization and ensuring everyone is aware of it. And build versus buy, don't try to reinvent the wheel. If there is someone who's already built it, um, and if it is not a part of your core product, um, look for solutions during technology selections where you can easily plug in and instead of building features ground up. And budgeting and planning, as I previously mentioned, plan your team size well. Uh, don't commit to things if you can deliver and don't get the team into a suboptimal state either. And uh, flexible to pivot or shift as needed uh, because you don't want to have a brittle setup you want to be flexible and agile, uh, quickly learn from uh, the customers and uh, shift as needed. And of course, keeping the technology stack upgraded is very critical to continue to have a modern uh, solutioning in place so you're not incurring tech debt long-term. And generalists to moving to specific teams. Um, ag again, another thing that is very critical is to understand what specific expertise you need on the team and empowering the team to bring on board people who are experts in that domain or creating opportunities for people to learn and grow in that space. Moving to the next slide, uh, which is mainly the process. I know I'm running out of time, I have to move quickly. Uh, structure and process. 
in the early days of a startup, you're trying to move as quickly as possible to get things out the door. But as the company continues to grow, you need to set up streamlined procedures uh, to get, or processes to get things out the door. Um, and this can include figuring out how to share information within the company or outside the company. And even for prioritization, if you can include and collaborate with the stakeholders so they have clarity on why certain things are being prioritized and the why behind it will help. And um, think about um, startups which need to move quickly and are capable of innovating quickly. Um, you, you need to have enough processes that are lean enough, but not industrial strength. Uh, so you can continue to be agile like you were when you were a startup. And one thing you need to remember, you're not alone and you don't have to have all the answers, hence the community and the network. And this is one good opportunity, connecting with people who are running into similar challenges and can provide input. Lean on your peers, mentors, and partners outside of the company to bounce up ideas um, for technology growth strategy, both long-term and short-term. These people have been there, done that, and can provide a new perspective to your approach. Get feedback um, so you can get all the questions answered from different angles. Um, and again, it is not about solving everything on your own. Um, so you can lean on your team and your uh, network too. And also counting on your trusted vendors and consulting companies to provide the support for burst capacity um, when you have to augment the team to, for the opportunity cost. And lastly, ensure your technology strategy aligns with business goals. It can't be completely off on its own. Uh, you don't want to be spending time and effort on something that is completely different from what you want to address for your end users. And key takeaways, um, scaling is essentially about attracting and enabling growth. Since startups are built around growth, kneeling down scaling is very essential. And technology scaling is unique to every company's experience. So whatever is shared here is just a guidance, uh, something you need to be thoughtful about. Uh, so don't try to follow it to the dot. And system and processes um, are put in place to make scaling more efficient. And it's not just about adding people. It's about being thoughtful about who is getting added to the team. And again, uh, that brings us into, uh, to an end to this discussion. Thanks for your time. Um, and Gusto is definitely hiring. So <laughs> if you're interested, send me a message. Th th thank you so much, Rainy. That was uh, wonderful. And I am sure that you get a lot of people convinced to uh, join, join your team uh, and learn more from you in person. And furthermore, <laughs> I'm really grateful that you're also offering to do a Q&A session. So uh, for all of you who are uh, watching this, you can click on to sessions and then Q&A with Rohini, where she will be right in one minute after this. So th thank you very much, Rohini, and looking forward to the Q&A.